the day that Marvin goes his first time visiting. Amen. Uh, God Amen. bless you, sir. Yeah.
if we prefer grade 11, mark 10, 35 through 45. Remember those on our prayer list, Sister Brenda Rose, Elder Clem Walker, Sister Emma Clayton, all bereaved families. To our women, women's support group will resume meeting beginning March the 23rd. Please watch for the board tomorrow. And I don't believe we had January's birthdays because, we didn't have January's birthdays. We did.
who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Yes. The Lord strong and mighty. Yes. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Yes. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Yes. I have read Psalms 24 in its entirety. May the Lord bless you with his word, and Lord, may the word be sanctified in your heart to make you see it. Yes. Amen. How many of you need? I don't want to On December 10, 1878, 16 year old Osborne Dorsey invented the doorknob and doorstop to change the culture of people using unorthodox means of keeping their doors closed. Huh. The patent number, which was issued to Osborne, was uh, 210764. He was said to be residing in Washington, D.C. His intervention was described as an extraordinary and useful upgrade in door holding devices. Details of when Dorsey was born remain sandy, but historians who have been researching into his early life say he may have been born around September 19, 1862. His mother was Christina Dorsey, and he had two siblings, Mary and Levi. This captured in the Washington, D.C. Slave Emancipation records from April 1862. The Dorsey is listed as Osborne Dorsey, son of the above name, Christina. Age about eight months, ordinary size, dark complexion. He was born a slave, but free when he was around eight months old. According to the history, his sister Mary was six, six years older than him and was also described as ordinary size, while Levi was four years old and described as huge in stature. Little is known about his life, but one fact is documented. He had a patent for his invention in 1878. Records of Dorsey's father are also unknown. But what is known is that the former owner of the Dorsey's, Mary Peter, asked for compensation after they were free. Historians suggest that the Dorsey's probably were the only slaves that Mary Peter had. Details from the 1880 census indicate that when Dorsey was 18 years old, he worked as a butcher and resided with his parents, siblings, and brother-in-law, Isaac Williams. Before Dorsey invented the doorknob, people relied on some type of latch to close their doors with others, leather straps and handles. The invention wasn't readily embraced. It took many years for people to accept fixing the knobs on their doors when they realized the knobs offered them better safety and ease when opening their doors compared to the latch or leather straps. The description of Dorsey submitted to the patent office to Aiken to what we now refer to as a doorknob. It had a rod which is horizontally stationed between the doorknob and door frame. It's been a moment in black history. <laughs> See what I'm How many want the Lord to fight the battle? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some battles going on. I may not know your battle. May not know battle, but I know I can't fight them on my own. God's got to fight them. I can't fight them at all. Amen. Amen. Fight my battle, Lord. No one can fight it like you. Fight my battle, Lord. No one can fight
of God together said amen. amen. Let's put our hands together and bless the Lord. Christians, but he had an encounter with Christ. Amen. 
was knocked off his beast. His sight was taken from him, at least for a while. He had to be led blind into the city where he had a man named Ananias lay his hands on him. Scales fall off his eyes. And he began to see as he never had seen before. This is the Apostle Paul that penned many of the letters of the New Testament, this being the second letter to the church at Corinth. And Paul is talking about his heritage. He's talking about all the great things God has used him to do. He's talking about having literally been uh, in a scene, a, a vision, having been taken up uh, and saw things that he couldn't even explain, heard things that that were words to adequately describe. He, Paul says, I, I, I had so much greatness going on in me and through me that I had to be given. I was given a thorn in the flesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, to keep me in my pains, to humble me yes, that I might not yes, lose yes. sight that it was God, about God and not me. Anybody ever yes, been there where yes, things were going so well that You've almost found yourself saying, look what I have done rather than what the Lord has done. If that's the case with the Apostle Paul. And so when he pins this letter, I read one verse to you. I, I want to just talk to you today on this Super Bowl Sunday. For just a few minutes about the power of weakness. I, I remind anybody that may have been on the rock the last few days that this is Super Bowl Sunday. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of persons, Sister Ross, uh, are going to be in Vegas today. Uh, thousands of, of chickens, fowl, yard birds, if you will, that sacrifice themselves for today's festivities that we as human cat kind of carry by the herds. Uh, likewise, they offer themselves at the slaughterhouse for the pleasure and enjoyment of many on today. Bacon and different types of sausage. For my friend the pig joined the ranks of the no more that he might celebrate a game ironically. Played with the pig skin. People from Kansas City and San Francisco, in fact all 50 states, if not around the world, either meet in Vegas or tune in on their televisions. Politicians will pause from their infighting. Students will pause from their studies. Approximately 70,000 people would jam the stadium and another 250 to 300,000 from God knows where will fill the city known as Sin City. I say again, millions more would join in from around the world. But here's the tragedy, Pastor. With the intentionality, there will be no mention of the Lord's name. No prayer in His name. No worship music. No praise of Him in any way. And no complaint will be raised or fired. It's just another day of football. Super Bowl Sunday. Can, can I at this time remind us that it is Sunday? Yes. The Lord's Day. Yes. The very day that we, the children of God, gather to worship and honor our God. If that's not enough, does not the word of God say the following? This is the day that the Lord has made us rejoice. And be glad in it. Does it not also say, forsake not the gathering together of yourselves that we might edify or build up one another? Those in Vegas say, we are gathering together, we're going to have a good time, but that's not about edifying or building up one another. They're gathering in Vegas, not only, but in LA and Miami and Dallas and Phoenix and New York City and Boston and Atlanta and Detroit and Denver and San Diego. San Francisco, Butte, Montana, Sioux City, Iowa, and even Tyler, Texas. But not to worship God or call on His name. What a missed opportunity we have. Now let me be clear. I still enjoy a good football game to be Today, the only thing that could buy more interest me in this game would be if my beloved Dallas Cowboys would be playing the game. But they at home like all the other teams except two. I know all this information, yet I still ask, where is such enthusiasm for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Uh, are we not telling the story of Jesus accurately? Have we lost our excitement and enthusiasm for the story of Jesus and worship? Our passion for Him and about Him? What is it that 
The world is missing that we have not offered. Right. Have we failed to show love for one another as a result the world really does not believe we are his disciples? Right. Inquiring minds want to know. Right. I ask this series of questions because something Pastor Ross is going to tear me wrong. And unless we, the church, make some immediate corrections, damage will continue to be done to our witness on behalf of the church. Uh, but, but, but now I'm convinced somebody is ready to tune me out. You've already decided and determined that this task of turning this spiritual ship around is too big a task to tackle. It's an old issue. And since those before us could not seem to figure it out, what makes us think we're going to ever figure it out? You have decided by thought and your behavior that somebody else ought to do it. Somebody else can't do it. Somebody else should do it. Such thinking reminds me of a gathering of some of my friends uh, some time ago. Here is that story. I, I, I had four friends. I had everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. My, my four friends, everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. And they gathered together and were having a conversation. That there was an important job to be done. And everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it. But nobody chose to do it. Somebody got angry about that. Because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could have done it. The story might be confusing, but the message is clear. Because no one took responsibility. Nothing got accomplished. But by now, you you ready to ask me, I hear you. Pastor, uh, what's that got to do with, with the gospel? I'm glad you asked. Here it is. Everybody. Has been issued the call of God to evangelize, to seek the lost, if you will. The Great Commission, as recorded in Matthew 28 19 uh, and 20, says it this way Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, identifying them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But don't stop there, teach them. These new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Some of us don't mind seeking them out, but we don't want to disciple them. I like it to a good country boy like I used to be. I, I like catching fish, but rather than clean the fish, I get on the way on the way home. My mama asked me, boy, did you ever catch any fish? Uh, yes, ma'am. Where they at? I said, well, I stopped by Miss Kennedy's and I gave them some. And I stopped by Mr. Jesse's next door, Hampton, and I gave them some. She said, boy, you better bring them fish home. You catch them, I'll clean them. So, so somebody missed that. Let me try another one. Most of us in church don't mind fishing. But we don't like cleaning. Catching the fish is fun. Cleaning the fish is messy. That's how my church, church work was messy. It ain't, if you expect the church to be a sanitized place where everybody is full of the Holy Ghost and everybody is loving and warm, you come to the wrong house. We're a hospital. We're a battleship. We're not a cruise ship. We don't come up in here to vacation. We don't come to lay around. We come in here to equip the saints for the doing of the ministry. We come to get filled up so the Holy Spirit can drive us out. So the world can drain us empty and drive us out. 
missed it. How was church? Oh, it, it was good. Rev done it today. Choir sang today. Did you get anything to make you a better disciple? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. I, I try to pray with my son every Sunday morning before he preaches. Now, I was talking to him last week. We were praying. And I said, son, when you get to the pulpit today, be focused on preaching Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> be focused on preaching Jesus up because when the people leave, you don't want them to leave talking about you. But now they leave talking about the one you preached about. Too many of us are so in the, in the, in the habit of building our own little kid. Look at me. Yeah. It ain't about you. It ain't yeah. about me. It's about him. Yeah. Yeah. We've been tasked with the Great Commission. Now, if you shrink back from such a tall order of command, let me say that I do understand. Catch on the back hook and make you feel better. But that does not get either of us off the hook right. of God's command. It is a tall task. It is a weighty task. Seemingly impossible on a good day. But let me remind you of this fact. You have some holy help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. You are not in this by yourself. God has not left you to your own device or your own strength or your own means to do it or your own wisdom. He did say, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. That means that you are never alone. If you go to the Mountain, God is there. The Lord's valley, God is there. For the eastern from the west, God is there. Even if you should make your bed in hell, God is there. That means you are never, ever, never alone. His promise is that He will never leave you, He will not forsake you. That means that wherever you go, whatever you find yourself in, God is with you. Where we find His presence, Pastor. We find his power. Yeah. Yeah. When we find his power, everything is possible. Amen. Which leads us to declare, I can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthened yeah. me. You and I can declare yeah. to the whole world that he that is in us is greater yeah. than he that is in the world. Yeah. That, my brothers and sisters, puts us in a great position. A position of victory. Uh -huh. Because we're not seeking victory. We operate from a position of victory in Christ, in God, already seated with Him in high places. We don't have to fight for the victory. Right. I, I, it bothers me when I hear good saints saying, Oh, the, the devil's on my back. The devil's, I, I'm in a fight with the devil. Why? Right. He's defeated already. Right. He wants you to think that you're in a battle. Right. No, he's not on the The devil is a father of life. That's what he does. He's a liar. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And if he can convince you otherwise, he'll have you walking in weakness. One, if you can do anything. Listen, Christ will fight your battle fight. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. You need to be like Hezekiah when your enemies are all around. They're so innumerable, you can't count them all. You have to do like him and uh, be guided by the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, Hezekiah, take another look. And when he looked back again, he saw fiery chariots and fiery soldiers with their swords, too numerous to count. And all he could say was, Lord, uh, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And I stopped out over there to tell somebody today, stop trying to figure it out and just keep your eyes on Christ. He don't fight the battles for you. He don't make a way for you. He don't open the doors for you. He don't give you the victory. He'll remind you that he's already defeated death, Satan, and the grave. You're in a position of encouragement and a position of blessing. So much so that right here and now, Pastor, we're going to pause and just take us a prayer. All right. A moment of celebration that that God even chose us. I don't know about you, but I think about how bad I was and 
how good God had to be to save a rich like me.
180 foot. That would say it must be important. But it never says be strong in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong and courageous. That's what God told Joshua in the first chapter of the book of Joshua. It, it occurs in various forms 13 times to Joshua specifically. Be strong in the Lord. Listen, the Lord is the only basis we have for any confidence we may have because he is omnipresent. Everywhere at the same time. His eyes are always upon us. He's omnipotent. He has all power in heaven and earth in his hands. He's omniscient in all his ways. He knows everything. God doesn't have to learn a thing. So when we go to God, we're not informing God of anything he doesn't already know. The Bible says he knows what we stand in need of even before we have. But in our weakness, we say, God, here I am again. Knee bent and body out. Because we know. Maybe you wonder what strength is. Strength is the ability to withstand great force. Oppression. And anybody know that it was nothing but the Lord that kept you from being crushed? Under some circumstances you had to go through. But God has a way of covering us. Not covering up for us, but covering us in our weakness, even in our disaster. God has a way of uh, giving us strength when we have none left. Uh, we, we call that grace. And, and the Bible says God's grace is. Hey, I like preaching here because y'all help me preach. God's grace is sufficient. Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear not, but I am with you. Be not dismayed, but I am your God. Here it comes. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's Isaiah's word today. Is that even enough? The same Paul that I'm reading, uh, 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 30, in the next chapter, verses 9 and 10 says, uh, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities or weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches. I take pleasure when I'm in need. I take pleasure in being persecuted. I take pleasure in distresses for Christ's sake. But when I'm weak, then I am strong. Paul is saying, listen, every time I get weak, God shows up. Whenever my back's against the wall, God shows up. When I'm out of source, my resource shows up and provides for my needs. He says, every time I go through something, I've learned not to complain, not to have a pity party, not to say God has forgotten me, not to say the devil is about to take me out, but to be reminded that where God guides, God provides. That God vision, he offers provision. That God always takes care of his children, and I'm not in this by myself. When I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, I am not waving a white flag. I'm going to remind myself that he that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. I'm going to remind myself when I can't see my way through that God works the night shift. When I'm out of time and out of source, when I'm out of myself, when I'm at the end of myself, that's when God steps in on time. I've got to remind myself that what I see is no indication of what God is doing. So while I'm trying to figure it out, God already got it worked out. I just got to learn how to be still and know that he is God. I've got to learn how to wait on him. Isaiah reminds him of us in saying, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brothers and sisters, wait, I say, upon the Lord. 
keeps wanting to come in our lives when we are weak, but you're not the first one to get weak. You will be the last one to deal with weakness. But understand, to be weak is a great state to be in. I think God can't help many of us because we're just too darn strong. We are two separate lines, two separate dependent. Uh, and not just on ourselves, but other places. Some of us think in the pew that only the deacon has access to God. Or only the pastor has access to God. Or only the elder has access to God. And that they're the only ones with power to get a prayer through. But I stop by to remind somebody, listen, when the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom, it opened up the way for you to have access to Almighty God and know that it is all right. You don't have to get in line at the Pope's house. You don't have to pay Oh, <laughs> 
or weak that just said, Lord, have your way. The Bible says, if they already in the grave, that the trunk's going to shine. Dead in Christ. That's right. Thank you. 
Lead and guide and guard, plan with the wisdom of God as he leads your people at the side of the Baptist church, God. Lead and guide and God. Bless him, mighty God. Bless the church as well, God. We pray a mighty move in the church as well, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray you bless his family, God. Oh, God, his wife, his son, his grandson, God. Bless and trust him, God. Oh, God, bless him in a mighty and in a abundant way, God. I come to you, God, to ask you to bless the name that be given to us, God. In this prayer, let's God bless uh, the Williams family, God. Oh, God, move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power for the Williams family, God. You know what they need, God. You know what they need, God. Move in an awesome and mighty way, God, for the Williams family, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, I pray, God, you bless God. Jeremiah, you be God. Oh, God, touch Jeremiah in the mighty run away, God. I bind the hand of the enemy. Yes. Oh, God, move for Jeremiah, God. Yes. Oh, God, it's only you can do, God. Bless Jeremiah in the mighty run away, God. Oh, God, I pray you bless the Diane Morgan, God. Bless her, God. Bless her, God. And encourage her, God, as well, in the name of yes. Jesus. Bless the Diane's grandson, Darion, God. Touch his heart, touch his mind, God. Oh, God, move. Mighty in Darius' life, God. Move mighty for him, God. Oh, God, I pray you bless all of the youth nationwide, God. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, God. I bind the hand of the enemy in the life, God. I bind oppression, I bind depression, I bind the spirit of suicide, God. Oh, God, set them free, God, and deliver in their minds, God. In the name of Jesus, God, move by your mighty hand. And move by your body power, God. Oh, God, I pray, God, you bless Brother uh, Russell's aunt. Touch her by your mighty hand of here, God. Move by your mighty hand of her, God. Move in an awesome and a mighty way, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Bless all of our sick, God. Name by name and one by one, God. Bless in a mighty one way. Heal, deliver, and set free, God. Lift burdens and lift loads, God. Move for your people, God. And a mighty and abundant way, God. Bless Brother Gary who has come forth, God. Yes. Bless him, God. Yes. Strengthen him, God. Yes. Shape him and mold him, God. Be the man you call for in this end time, God. Yes. Move off in his life, God. Bless his family, God. Touch their life. Touch their hearts, God. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Oh, God, these blessings, I pray, God. Blessing each one that has gathered themselves in your house. Yes. Yes. Name by name and one by one, God. I declare and I decree blessings be upon them, God. Oh, God, these blessings we ask. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for your glorious son. Jesus, we pray. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Lord, keep you this in our prayer. Amen.
thought my birthday was yesterday. It's all right. Not one week. Believe me, thought my birthday was tomorrow. It's 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 Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah, all right. Try out, I'll go look for it now. You will go home. The court reads Here's to a year of more thriving, less surviving, more essentials, less. <laughs> okay, more releases, less holding on, more open hearts, less closed minds, more grateful praise. Less anxiety, worry, more, more this moment, less the past, more the journey, less the getting there. God made my life a complete. When I placed all the pieces before him, he gave me a fresh start. And I am alert to God's ways. I don't take God for granted. Every day I view the way he works. I feel put back together and am watching my steps. God wrote, rewrote the text in my life. When I open the book, my heart to his eyes. And it's Matt, Psalms 18, verses 20 through 24, the message Bible. Some more reading here. Peer to God's gift of joy, peace, hope, peace, the most of all himself, to satisfy our hearts. May he lead you into a new year flowing with his very best. Happy birthday, church and pastors, Amy. Thank you so much. They gave me a little something, something here. I got Amy a hundred dollars here, so I can beat the wings. <laughs> I don't want to thank the church and Pastor Dave. Thank you for your gift. Thank Lord, thank you for thinking of me. Amen. Amen. was on uh, Tuesday night to listen to Reverend Gaines say, getting older, some things you just can't do like you used to do. Amen. Your, 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 <laughs> your mind said you can, but your body said, don't you do it. <laughs> so we're getting on up there. And I thank God in advance for another birthday. And I thank you right now. Amen. I really thank you for right now. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I can tell you some stories regarding how God has brought me through, and I thought I was going to make it. Amen. But he brought me through. Amen. Thank you, God. And I want to say this one thing. I was out back in 2015 on Winchester Road, and God caught and hit me. And I took five lanes into the oncoming lane. Did not one car come that way? And I had not a scratch. The, the angel of the Lord came about then yes, that yes, 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 And I praise God daily yes, for another day's journey. Yes, 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 to do the will of God and to please God and God alone. Him only. I want to please. Amen. Amen. The last words of benediction from our speaker of the hour, the Reverend Richard Gaines. To God be the glory. Uh, quick disclaimer. I don't know what he's talking about. He's getting an old thing. I can't identify with that. Just like the book says, and I'm in the new, oh, that's the spirit. The <laughs> <laughs> body does, lets it know. <laughs> Thank you, family. I thank you all, family. Thank you all. I'm going to ask my wife and I thank you all for inviting us to come and share.
share with you today. Uh, I praise that the Lord will bless you supernaturally in the days to come. Uh, having said that, we can go on. Amen. Stand. And we pray. Father God, thank you for all. the time together. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. But more than that, what our hearts have been back to experience. Help us to hide your word in our hearts that we might not send in this year. Help us to remember, oh God, that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So if we want to brag at all, let us brag on our weaknesses, yes, our yes. infirmities, our persecutions that we experience in the name of Jesus. Oh God, as we leave this place in one another, remind us that we never leave your presence. With your presence, we get your power. Your power makes all things possible. We simply say now unto him who is able to keep us from yes. falling. To present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God together say, Amen. 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 Go in the power of Almighty God.